of the game, easily BTB, who's still in the same? Everything that we speak is building a flame. It's marks from the beat, so remember the name from the bars that we bring. Who's killing the game? Easily all right guys welcome to another episode of the bring the bars podcast and today i'm joined by my label mate and a good friend of mine kofa 811 how you doing man kofa baby i'm doing good i'm blessed to be back on here man so happy to have you back on and i wanted to touch on one topic first before like i won't talk about it much but you're an original member of the btb group and also btb records one of my first signees then shit happened you got locked away for a little bit and you came back i feel stronger than ever like how has your mindset changed since you got back, got back? i mean because now it's like before going in, you know, I'm on the run. My mind is not really there. I'm forcing my music out just to have something circulating. And then now, like, I'm finished parole. I got out. And, like, I got time to elevate my mind in there. So as I elevate it, it's like the things that I'm choosing to rap about now is, like, I'm still gruddy and, like, gritty with it. But I'm, I'm also teaching them. So it's like I'm aiming for something different. Yeah, and you're hitting it, man, because not a lot of people, when they go in, a lot of them are in and out of life, right? And you really, really, your whole mindset, everything. What you're doing, man, is incredible. It's getting your life back on track. And I props to you for that, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I had to keep going. Like, it kept saying the whole time, like, music is my life. Yeah. You can tell in the music you release, and even with uh, in the last year, you've dropped a couple projects. You did R RKOB one, and you did Ultrasound. But I wanted to touch on Ultrasound a bit because it's not a a Kofa a pure Kofa project. It's a collaboration project. Well, how did this whole concept come about to do Ultrasound? Well, for one, I was inspired by you. Thank you, man. For global domination, because. Yeah, because, like, I wanted to do something with, like, collaborate a bunch of artists, and I get this idea from you and DJ Khaled, like, and just put everybody on one project and not even make it, I have to be on the record, I have to speak during their records, like, it's just everybody coming up together, I'm trying to promote everybody. That's the way to go, man. You got to bring everybody up with you. And the artists you respect as well, like you had Obi-Wan on there, R.A.P. Yeah. Uh, you had a, quite a few artists on there and they all did their yeah. thing. You're not on every track. You're barely actually even on the project. Right? Out of 16 tracks, I probably did three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But RKOB is a little different. And, and RKOB, in the beginning, you shout out with your main track, RKOB, the intro. All these Auckland artists, what impact did they all have on you? They had a, they had a huge impact. Like, when Jay-Z, Fabulous, Biggie, you know, they, they affected Brooklyn in a major way. Uncle Murder, Bobby Smurder. So, you know, it kept our names dominant in the field of hip hop, especially being from New York City. And as the as the mecca of hip hop, so it was just like they all had a huge impact. Jay Z is my favorite, so it's like they had a huge impact. Well, you do a lot of like tribute tracks too. Like you have Dear Kobe, uh, you have J Cole. I don't know if that's released yet. But Not yet. You have those, and you can just tell that you pay tributes to the one that you know, hit you and makes you motivated to do music. You can tell with just your tribute tracks and you're fucking fantastic at them, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. Like, like Kobe, J. Cole, like the J. Cole one ain't out yet, but when the J. Cole one dropped, they're going to love that. They're going to love that. I hope they love it if they understand it. Yeah, well, yeah, I, the whole point of it, like you talk about even like uh, no features and stuff like that, it's you can just do when you do a solo album, I'm a big believer and yeah maybe grab a couple features or whatever but make it mostly yourself yeah. compared to yourself with ultrasound or me with global domination it's just pure collaboration albums but yeah, yeah. Those projects i just show yourself for sure yeah man, i'm at a good space right now in my life so the music coming august 11th or uh, um Ah, I said RKOB. RKOB 2, July 31st, August 11th, 
And is the album just going to be titled 811 as well? Yes. The, the album is 811. Like it's just a story that, for August 8th, 11th to drop it. I was like, as if I didn't even think of that or anybody like 8th, 11th, fuck, perfect. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just one, it's a story about 8th, 11. I wanted, I had different names for the album, Life on Flushing Avenue, and many different names, but I was just like, 8th, 11th, it's going to be about me, whether I was in Philly, prison, in love, going through a breakup, it's going to be about me. And so, yeah, you, you you know, originally from New York, you're living in Philly now. How has that changed then since moving to Philly? It's, it's, it's all right for where I live at, but Philly is crazy too. Like, they, they probably got the highest murder rate right now. Like, people die for no reason. So it's, it's like New York still. It's just, I'm in a comfortable space with my wife, my daughter. I'm comfortable. Yeah, and it's one of those where you choose where you go, right? Like, you always get those murder spots of the world, but when you're just sticking to yourself and living your life and not getting yourself involved in that shit, yep. that's as dangerous as people would say, because Chicago, too, is another one where I know the murder, like, capita is fucking insane. Yep. You know, you've got to experience things that talk about more things. Yeah. You run out of things to talk about when you're not moving around. Yeah, exactly it. Now you, you got your wife, you're doing all this. You dropped your latest single, Myself. Incredible. Yeah. When you dropped yeah. it, you showed me a sneak peek before you even dropped that. And I said, fucking, I cannot wait to see what you're doing next. That was incredible. How did the whole Myself concept come about? I've been working on myself for over a year now when I when I started it. it I wanted that to be on RKB. But I only had a first verse, and Zaloyu actually did a verse. But his engineering and my engineering weren't great at the time. So he's out in Arizona. I get a good engineer. Now a year later, I wrote the verse in prison, the second verse. And then I got out. That's when I, I laid it down, and I just I decided to just move on without him because he was too busy. He couldn't do it. So I didn't know who else could even do it. Yeah, because that, that turned out, even your video for it, it was not what you consider like a typical music video. It was literally videos of yourself. You live yeah. your life and everything like that. Was that always the plan from the start to have a video kind of that way? Yeah. So, you know, like, mm -hmm. I know I'm high as shit, Casey. <laughs> 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 I feel like a man. <laughs> but yeah, that was a dope track. Um, also, one thing I wanted to touch on, a lot of people, like I said, you're an original member of BTB Records. And, Day one. And when certain shit happened where we split mutually, like we, we never hated each other. We stayed friends through it all. Bad decision yep. on both sides, myself included. I'll take responsibility. Me but, too. Like, up about wanting to come back and I was all for it. What like drew you back to BTB record? Because it's like this these BTB you were the only one that gave me a shot. Like nobody never stepped to me and wanted to help me further myself and my career. Nobody ever gave me any advice. Like everybody was just like, oh I right, he raps, he raps, cool. He got a hot song. And that was that. And I always wanted my own teams like we could just work and just do music. I never had nobody that was willing to do that. And that's why I felt like BTB is family. Man, when you hit me back, to be honest, I wasn't expecting it. Like I said, we never had any hard feelings towards each other. We support each other the whole yep. time. And it was something I regretted and I thought about asking you back and then you got, you hit me up and I couldn't have been happier, man, for you being a part of the team <laughs> and up for the team that I know you're going to do with a couple people who really fucked us over. But uh, just appreciate you, man, for coming back and just having a faith in me. Like you said, I had a faith in you. You have it in me, too, man. So I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, man, I thank you for having me a part of it and having the faith in me also because I don't know what I would be doing right now. Somebody would be trying to jerk me around. I don't know what I'll be doing right now. Honestly, I think you'd still be killing it, man. You got to give yourself credit. Like you, you're an incredible artist, and I think you'd still be there, fucking killing it with your music. 
Your BTB yeah. album, 811. I can be more excited. Uh, RKOB, the end of July. What, what do people expect the differences between RKOB and your BTB records on record? Can you say that one more time? The difference between RKOB2 and the album? In your album, man. what can they expect to be different between the two since they're releasing kind of close close together? Yes. Uh, RKOB2 is going to be more for get you in the mood for that original code for 811 while I, I, I freestyle and rap over other rappers beats a lot of popular beats some unknown beats it's just a mixtape in me i'm being in the streets just being grimy and then a lot most of them are brooklyn beats because i'm, I'm using that as my throw like all these legendary brooklyn tracks but then in 811 the album i tell you i slow down i tell you stories I get to show you that I like to party and go to clubs. I get to tell you my love life, how things was going on between me and my wife, and like a lot of stuff. Like it's gonna be different, but it's still gonna be great music. It's still gonna be great music. Yeah, so it's more like uh, 811 is gonna be more of a personal, and RKOB2 is just kind of showing your skill and love for Brooklyn, pretty much. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and at the same time, I hyped you up, get ready for the album. <laughs> you ready, man. I, I fucking can't wait. You show me some snippets. We got you on Kofa 16 coming up on the update this Thursday. Yes. I heard those. Yes. The return of Kofa 16 nominated for the BGB Awards. Um, yeah. Speaking of the BGB Awards, I got Shout out to all the winners of the BGB Awards, man. Congratulations to all the nominees and winners. Man, that was a fun show to put together. And I, in my head, I kept saying, I need to top the first one. I need to top the first one. And I think it did. And the performances, you closing the show, and you did something different than every other artist did is you performed on the streets. Yeah. So like when I had I to do with the idea for the performance, was it always in your head you wanted to perform on the streets? No, I was going to do it in the studio at first. I was going to go to my man's studio, and we was just going to do it there. But then I was just like, you know what? I'm looking at how everybody's doing it. Like certain people sent me their previews. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to the streets. Cause I know I'm leaving New York soon. So let me do something in the streets of New York. So I did it like that. Huh? It definitely fit it perfectly. I couldn't have figured a better thing. And that's why I had I had to have you close the show because I wanted something different than people, you know, just recording inside or whatever. I wanted to end it off on a like a different note and you representing New York before you left. Yes. Any better, man. <laughs> yeah. That was a good memoric moment for me, man. I, I enjoyed the whole award show. Like I was watching it, my wife was watching it. She watched it last year when I was locked up. So Yeah. Yeah, we heard uh, comments from you. You'd send us, like, send me your little videos when you were locked up talking about BGB and about the awards. And mm -hmm. having you there fucking sucked big time, man. But having you on this one, perfect. And next yeah. year, you'll be nominated for a bunch more because you'll have all this material out. That's for sure. Uh, BGB, we're going to dominate the awards show next, uh, next year. <laughs> we're going to dominate. <laughs> we're going to dominate. No disrespect to the rest of the community. Yeah, because every category, man, was fucking, and it was tight. That was hard to vote for. The only one I knew in my head that was going to win was OB1 for Top Album. And I just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, you out. Because I listen to a lot of the music. I'm like, yo, OB1 shit is just hard. A lot of people would be like, that's your bro. Of course, you're going to say that. Like, nah, OB1 shit is really hard. Yeah, I just knew, I heard his album, and I was even nominated for Top Album, and so were other BTB Records artists, but I just knew, listening to Obi's, I was like, he's going to get this, he's going to deserve it. I tell yeah. him stuff afterwards, and yeah, it was, it was kind of a landslide, to be honest with you. Yeah, basically, I didn't expect to win anything. I was just, I was, I was watching just the, the support. I know I was performing. I didn't expect the win. My wife was like, you sure? I was like, I do not expect the win. It's not even about the win. Like, it's the recognition, and then we all supporting each other. 
that's what it is, man. Just a huge support system. Like even you don't win an award. Like I was, like I said, I was nominated too. I didn't win. No hard feelings. Yep. Nothing. Just to be there, be nominated, and showcase. Like we had so much talent on that award show. It was fucking unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. Blew me away with that. One of my favorites right now is R.A.P. Man, rap is my guy, man. That's one of my favorites. He's one of the most unique uh, flows I think I've heard in a long time for music where it's hard to commute in my head like how he does it because he's like, he goes off beat but stays on beat at the same time with the poetry he does and I'm just like, how the fuck does he do it? <laughs> mm -hmm. You planning to work with R.A.P.? Yeah, I definitely do. We have, I'm supposed to be on a record with him, Willie Scan, and Dunk Joe. <clears throat> I was going through something, so I fell back for a little while. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> but me and personally, we got to work. There's a lot of guys I want to work with that I've never worked with. Me and you got to do our own track together. <clears throat> me and Osa is supposed to do something. But I think the ruthless is killing it right now. Yeah. Killing it. Yeah, he is, man. We're actually, this will be an exciting thing I'm saying right now, but we are working on an EP between me and Automatic called Automatic King. That will be dropping in a few months from now, so I'm excited to drop that on everybody. Yeah, Automatic the Ruthless on RKOB2. He got some heat for that. <laughs> yeah, man, you stay true with the, the underground artists. And I know a big one for you. That's one of your boys. You guys stay in touch a lot. Is Ob One? How is like Ob One affected like you and your music and the advice he gives you? Because he talks to me too as well. I talk to him <laughs> and he gives. Yes, yeah, that guy, man. Yeah, that's my brother right there, Ob One, man. But Ob One, like some of our volume too. Make sure y'all go get that. And Ob One, he affects me like because we talk to each other and he gonna keep it real with me. Like if it's something. It don't sound good. He's not going to sugarcoat it because I expect him to do that. You're my brother. And I do the same thing with him. Like, we hear a lot of each other's music before it actually gets released to get our input on it. Yeah. And, you know, like, you know, me and Obi-Wan, like, we feel like we have to stop the underground. Like, so we just, I don't know. Like, that's my guy right there. Well, you said it, nailed it right on the head, man. He's completely honest. Like, the, I've talked to him many times. We do video chats as well, and he does not hold back if he's against something or if he's really for what you did. The guy will be as honest as all of you. If you like it or not, he'll be honest, but you got to take it as he's coming from his personal opinion, his thoughts, and not to take it personal because he's just trying to help people grow. And I met Obi Wan through this community. And that's 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 like me and him like this. Like, did you guys like link up in the BTV group, or was that like, did you guys know each other beforehand? We didn't know each other beforehand, but as I had a certain Facebook name before, and he realized the name was affiliated to certain ties, and so we he, he understood, and we started talking from there. So that's when we started getting close, talking more. He from New York City originally. Yeah. And then I started listening to his music and I said, oh, all right. And he did a feature for me. That's what we did right now. Yeah. I had no idea for a feature for right now. Not for no remix. I already did the original. Was I love you. He wanted to do the remix. He bodied it. Now I had to come up with a hot list. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun to work with those artists that make you step up your game when you... Yeah. Yeah, man. I know Be global domination too, because there's like twenty five fucking artists on that thing. That yeah. that my verse set first so I can send to them or the hook of the topic of the track. They listen to it. I worked with you as well. I worked that way. And some verses I got back, I swear I had to go rewrite because I was just like I <laughs> That's how I be. I like it like that. I like it like when Willie Scan dudes sitting there and watching the features and I'm listening, they all killed it. 
they all killed it. Jumping Joe and man, he's the man. I love Joe. Yeah, jumping Joe is the man. man. Mally, yeah, Jones. Jones. I'm a feature on his album coming out, and I love working with Mally, Jumpin' Joe. Man, they're they're all great guys. Obi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. There's a lot of guys I got to work with. Yeah. But going Be back to music a little bit, I want to say, because, you know, now you're married, you have a job, you have a full-time job. I know you're doing interviews, you do your music. How the How do you balance it all? Man, I'm used to being a, a before you know I used to be in the streets and I used to just be out for numbers of hours with no sleep, doing the same thing just in an illegal way. So you know if I could do that same thing illegally, I could put that same time into something that's positive and put that same energy and I'm gonna get better results. I ain't gotta look over my shoulder for it. I could count I could I could show you where I got it from. Yeah. You know, so I put that same energy into my music. Like music work, I just some, some things. Some things don't get attention every day, but everything has time. I love that, man. Like you had the work ethic before, but now you're just putting it into the right avenues, and love to hear that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. It ain't easy though. No, but you're doing it, man. You're doing a, things that a lot of people, like I have family members <laughs> who are still in prison and like, you know, and got out, went back in and just never did. So, you know, props to you. I can't say it enough because I, my cousin, one of my best friends growing up is rotting away in a cell right now because he didn't get out of it and he's there for life now. And, it fucking sucks when you hear those stories and like you have the potential and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always the worst. Are you planning it's fucking rain like raining like crazy out here. We hit some massive storms over here. Fuck, we got a tornado like a couple weeks ago when we we're supposed to do the interview. Like a few weeks back, I had to cancel on you because our whole city lost power for like four days. Man, tornadoes. Yeah. And it's rare we get them over here. Oh, yeah. We don't get them over here either. So if we're, I was the head out. I got to move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not Kofa, baby. See? No. <laughs> Don't fuck around with that shit, man. <laughs> Hell no. I ain't that type of gangster. <laughs> and going back, you know, RKOB, the end of July, are you planning any more singles to drop in the meantime before uh, the mixtape comes out? Yeah, I'm planning on dropping something any day now on SoundCloud and YouTube. I don't got an actual title for it. It might just be the lost tape to Cold for 811, but I'm gonna drop like 10 tracks. Oh, nice. Non profit, just put it out there, promotional. Keep the name going. Huh? To keep the name going in between drops. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep it dropping everywhere. I, I ain't dropped nothing on SoundCloud in a long time. I'm gonna just put it up there, not even trying to profit off of it. Just budget it off of it. Just keep my name going. Promotional purposes of it, yeah. SoundCloud, YouTube, Audio Mac as well. If you can drop it on there, I know Audio Mac gets, gets a lot of plays still to this day. But yeah, I, did. I always had body, but I never got into it. But I show sure well. Yeah, just to drop some promotional stuff for sure. Uh, Dat Piff as well is another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are dope. And the Lost Tapes are. <laughs> Freestyles and tracks that you made kind of never did anything with it. Yeah, I gotta, gotta do a freestyle C Mac back to back. <laughs> <laughs> C Mac be doing his thing. Oh man, he's great. He's got dropped me another freestyle for Freestyle Fire for the update coming out this Thursday. And yeah, he, he loves to freestyle. He's good at it too. Yeah, he is. Gotta get you both on one. Yeah, gotta see how that go. When you started, did you start off freestyling or were you always a writer? 
I was always a writer. I could never freestyle. Like I think I could, but I get too excited that I'm doing it, and then I end up just fucking up anyway. Like, cause I'm known as a writer only. Yeah, I hear you. Man. It's sometimes depending on the mood, it, it might just come out of nowhere. I just go as long as I could. Yeah, and yeah, me growing up as well, like I always freestyled with some buddies and that's just what we did. But when I got to writing, I, I can't even really go back to freestyling now because I don't, it just doesn't commute as well as, you know, writing it down for me. But coming out with like metaphors and punchlines and shit. Yeah, that's very hard to me. Yeah. And people are like, hey, how the fuck? And you're big on your metaphors. Big on your metaphors. You think your whole, your whole self track is like almost like the whole track is a metaphor to yourself and how you did it. And it's not just, yeah. it's not just far ahead. It's just literally just you fitting out your, your story and myself. Yeah, that's my heart right there. That's my, like, metaphors come from just that ever. With Lloyd Banks and Cassidy, all of them with our boys in Tina, all the teas, they all have puns. And everybody have punch lines. What's that? And you cut off there a little bit. <laughs> and then after, like, the, I come from that era, like, with Lloyd Banks, Joel Santana, Joel Ortiz, and, you know, Cassidy, they had those punch lines. And even in regular songs, like the way they would put it, so, you know, it's just like, I, I, I started writing in that era. That's how the, the metaphors come. Sometimes I don't even be trying to make a metaphor. It just be natural. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way to go. And you mentioned an artist there. I don't hear a lot of people talk about him, but it's Joel Ortiz. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Joel Ortiz, you know, he, he grew up not too far from where I grew up, so his, his music was definitely rotated around there. Yeah, man, like, you, I anybody I talk to with, like, artists and ask who their favorites are, people that they respect, I never hear his name come up, and he's one of the tops for me. He's an incredible artist. Yes, he is. He just ain't get the right people behind him. No, that's true, man, and speaking about all these artists, <laughs> We got J. Cole on my track. <laughs> in today's hip hop scene, not not nine, like but today's, who do you respect as artists today? Today? Who do you respect today as an artist right now? Definitely J. Cole. You know, little baby, he's been killing it. I respect him as an artist. And you know, it's it's really nobody else. Nobody else. Like, I don't hear them actually putting out worthy. I don't listen to the radio no more. Yeah, it's not, it's hard today to pick hard. like some that are out because I can't name, all my favorites are from the 90s, man. and. If they're still kicking, I'll still have them on my list. But if they're not, it's hard for me to pick any new ones. J. Cole, for sure, for me. Kendrick Lamar. Uh, yeah. I five year former. I've been listening to a lot of five year former. And he's definitely been getting better. So definitely, I say five year former. It's yeah, not too many. Yeah, Kendrick is just. It's not what you hear today anymore. I find same with Jake. Cole. Like, that last Jake Cole it came out a couple months ago. What a fucking incredible. Jay Z drops an album right now. There's nobody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking at yeah, the- We're going to get cut off. You soon because I only get 40 minutes on this thing. It's about to cut us off. But before I let you go, just let everybody know let everybody what they can expect next from Kofa 811 before we end this interview. But you know, RKOB2, the mixtape, dropping July 31st, August 11th, the album 811. It's my album, my first album. You can follow me on all platforms, Kofa 811, K O F A. 
anywhere. Instagram, Troublesome, 926, Facebook, Keith Hayes Jr. And I'm out there. Perfect. I'll have all the in the description for this as well. Anybody who's new to the show or new to Kofa, check out those links. You won't be disappointed because this guy, I can't talk highly enough about you, man. And I'm so happy that you are part of my team and just a part of this whole BTB movement. Yeah, you already know BTB ultrasound. We taking over. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you go, man, before this cuts us off. But thank you again for coming on. Yeah, you too, bro, man. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.